Hi there, this is Manuel with Antagma and welcome to a new Antagma tutorial. Today I want to dive into a medieval topic and this is chain mail. As you can see here, I just searched chain mail images online and you see these nice chain mail hoods there. And I want to create some chain mail by creating a procedural chain mail pattern inside of Houdini and then transforming this flat pattern onto a cloth simulation to make a piece of chain mail basically that is moving. So to start, let's think about the structure of chainmail. Let's see if we find a good example. This here, for example. And you see, chainmail is made of interlocking rings. And these rings are placed in a certain pattern. And to me, it looks very much like a hexagon pattern. Although, of course, we are dealing with rings. But the positions of the rings are pretty much like a hexagon packing of the plane. So if you take a lot of hexagons, you can pack the plane tightly. You can create a fitting of the plane. And if you then just replace these hexagons with rings, you should end up with something like this, especially if you rotate the rings a little. So that is my strategy. Let's first create a procedural hexagon pattern inside of Houdini and then replace the hexagons with rings. But before we dive into Houdini, let's first think a little bit about the geometry of a hexagon. So here I have a hexagon pattern and there are two distinct distances that we are interested in. The red distance, the horizontal distance between two midpoints and the green distance, the vertical distance between two midpoints. We need to calculate these distances to be able to move points, these distances apart, to create a hex pattern by replacing the points with hexagon. The hexagon is composed of six equilateral triangles and one side of one of these triangles is the radius, the size of the hexagon. So this here, this side here is the size. So if you have a look at the green quantity, you easily see that it is 1.5 times the size. So if I take one size and then half another size, I end up here. Here. So calculating this quantity is really easy. You just take the size and multiply it by 1.5. What about the red quantity? This quantity is two times the distance between the midpoint of the hexagon and one of its sides. But we do not know this distance. But we can use trigonometry to calculate the length. That is because we have a triangle here that is a right triangle. We have a 90 degree angle here. So we can use trigonometry. And if we use trigonometry to calculate the length of this side here, down here, we can just multiply it by 2 and end up with this horizontal distance. Which one is the right trigonometric function to calculate this? Let me quickly put down my trigonometric mnemonic that is so ka toa, referring to the three trigonometric basic functions, sine, cosine, and tangents. And we have this angle here. So we are dealing with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And that is a cosine, adjacent and hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And how big is this angle here? Well, from geometry, you probably know that the interior angles of an equilateral triangle are 60 degrees. So this angle theta is just half of it. It is 30 degrees. So that means we can write cosine of 30 degrees is degrees is the adjacent, this side here, adjacent, over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is just the size of our hexagon, because this is the size. And we do know the size, but we do not know the adjacent. So to solve this, let's just multiply both sides by size. That means cosine of 30 degrees multiplied by size is the adjacent. And here we have our formula. This adjacent side here is just cosine 30 degrees times the size of the hexagon. And if we take this times 2, we get the red distance. So we have our two distances. This red distance is cosine 30 degrees times size times 2. And this vertical distance here is just the size times 1.5. Now with this in place, let's dive into Houdini and let's get started building this. Here we are inside of Houdini. First we need a geo. Let's create a geometry object and let's call it hex. And let's dive inside. And to start, I need some points. I could use the adsub, but if I go in and add some points here, the adsub creates these interface elements for every point and I really don't like that because I have to create a lot of points. So let's get rid of this and instead let's use the point generate node. It can be used to just generate points. At the moment it's generating 5,000 points. If I middle click here, you see we have 5,000 points. And now to implement our hex grid, we want to move these points around. So lay down a bob, point bob. And let's call this 
hex grid like so make it visible and let's dive inside so first we need our parameters that define the hex grid and these parameters are the number of hexagons we need in x the number of hexagons we need in y and the size of one of the hexagons so let's start by laying down some parameter nodes first parameter will be the number in x the second parameter will be the number in y and the third parameter will be the size of the hexagon size like so now we can go one level up and can put in the numbers here so let's say let's create 10 by 10 points or hexagons and the size should be 0 0.0 one. But this gives a hundred points and we at the moment are generating 5,000 points. So let's use expressions to make the point generate, create exactly as many points as we need. To do this, let's just copy this parameter then let's go to the point generate and in this field, right click and paste relative references. Let me make this a little bigger. So now this is a reference to the first parameter. Let's do the same thing for the second one, copy parameter, and now let's multiply the two inside of this expression field and paste relative references. And if I now click here, you see the result is 100 because now this expression evaluates to the product of the two parameters that we have here. Now the point generate creates exactly as many points as we need. Let's make this a little smaller again and let's dive in. So now to start, let's calculate the quantities that we need, the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. Let's start with the vertical distance because it is easy to calculate. All we have to do is to multiply the size by a factor of 1.5. So let's lay down a constant of 1.5 and let's multiply multiply our size by 1.5 like so let me make the viewport a little smaller so now this is our vertical distance now for our horizontal distance remember first we want to calculate the cosine of 30 degrees so let's duplicate this constant node and put in 30 for 30 degrees and now we need a cosine node but before you connect this Please remember that the cosine node expects radians, not degrees. So we first have to turn the degrees from the constant into radians by using a degree to radians node, like so. Now this is a cosine of 30 degrees. Let's multiply it by the size. Duplicate this node, shake everything off and multiply this cosine by the size. Now this is half the distance between two midpoints. But if I now just multiply it by two and for readability reasons, let's multiply with another multiply node. So let's create another multiply node and a constant of two, like so. Constant two to put it in here. Now we have the horizontal distance. So out of this node here comes the vertical distance and out of this node comes the horizontal distance. So now we want to take the point number, the index of the points and multiply it by either the vertical or the horizontal distance to move points over and create a hexagonal grid. What we cannot use is a ptnum directly. Instead, we want to do some operations on the ptnum. To show you what I mean, let's quickly, for debug purposes, create a bind export node. Let's call the attribute it creates debug, like so. And we can just put the ptnum in here. Then it turns this into a integer because ptnum is an integer, but I want to calculate with floats. So let's cut this connection and quickly turn the ptnum into a float by using an integer to float conversion ptnum in here. Now ptnum is a float and let's put it in here. And now let's have a look at the geometry spreadsheet. And you can see this is just the index number 0, 1, 2, 3 as you would expect. Now we can use this number to just multiply the horizontal distance another multiply node, multiply this index number by the horizontal distance and this gives the offset from the origin for every point. If we now create a vector, flow to vector, we can just put this into the x here, into the x component and then connect the output to the position and this gives a long row of points, each offset by the correct amount. Now the problem is that we want to work with rows. After 10 points, we want to start over from the beginning. So we have to do something to the indices to make this work. The operation that we want to use is modulo. So let's create a modulo operator. And the modulo operator gives you the remainder of a division. So let's just take our float version of our ptnum and then get the modulo of our number x here, which is 10 at the moment. So now, what does this give? Let us quickly look at the geometry spreadsheet again. If I connect this here, now you get indices that resemble the remainder of the division. And that means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
nine and then zero again. It starts over. And that is exactly what we need. So instead of using ptnum directly, we want to use this to multiply our horizontal width. So put this in here. And now this gives all the points stacked on top of each other because after 10 points, it starts over from the origin. So now let's move them in the other direction, in the z direction. To do this, we just multiply by the horizontal distance, but we have to multiply the entire row. So always 10 points should get the same value. So for this, we have to again tinker with the indices, but this time we don't want to use the modulo. Instead, we want to use the division. Divide, and let's divide the index, the pt num, by, by this number x here. Let's see what this gives. And this gives values 0, 0 0.1, and so on and so forth, until we reach point 10, and then it is 1. So what we need is the integer component of this result. 0, 0, 0, then 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on and so forth. And to calculate this, we want to use a floor node. So if I put a floor node here, then it just keeps the integer part, and we get 10 times 0, 10 times 1, and so on. And that is exactly what we need to multiply the vertical distance. So now we can use these indices that we created here and just multiply them, the new multiply node, put this here, with the vertical distance that comes out of this node. So let's take these indices, multiply them, and put them here in Z. And you see this gives a pattern, a grid pattern. And it looks as if the distances are correct, because the distance in the horizontal direction is larger than the distance in the vertical direction. Great, but what is missing now is that we want to move every second row over by half of this horizontal distance, because we want to interlock the rings later. And fortunately, we do have this distance already here. It comes out of this node before we multiply by 2. It's just that we now need indices that count 0 for the first row, and then 1 for the second row, and then 0 for the next row, to tell just every odd row to move over. And how can we calculate this? Well, we can just take these indices. Let me show the geometry spreadsheet again. We can use these indices here. And now these just count up for every row, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if we just use the odd ones, for example, then it will work. So what if we just use another modulo on these indices here, a modulo by 2, to calculate new numbers? Let's do that. Let's just introduce another modulo, modulo, and then use this, and a modulo by 2. I will duplicate this node for clarity. And let's see what this gives. Let me move this debug down there. And you see this works. Now we have 10 times 0, 10 times 1, 10 times 0, 10 times 1. That is nice because now whenever this index is 1, we can do something. And what we want to do is we want to add to this horizontal offset value. We want to add half of the distance to this value. So let's create an add node. Add. And let's put it in here. And what do we want to add? We want to add half of the distance. That is the value that comes out of this node. But first we want to attenuate it by this index. So we need another multiply node. And we want to multiply this distance here with this index that we just calculated, like so. And now we can add this to the overall pattern. And you see, this offsets every odd row by half of the distance. And now we have exactly the pattern that we were looking for. Let's quickly check if this is the case. So let's go one level up and let's lay down a copy to points and circle node, circle, circle, primitive. And with the circle node, let's switch this to polygon and then six sides, which should be a hexagon. And let's switch to open org. And if we connect the geometry here, you see that you get a lot of hexagons. But first they are oriented in the wrong way and then they are too big. Fixing the size is easy. The size should be 0 0.01. So we can copy this parameter and just put it here into the radius, paste relative references, and into the radius of the other direction, paste relative references, like so. Oh, I have a 1 in here. That is not good. Delete the 1. Now they are the right size, but they are still oriented in the wrong way. Let's fix this by using a normal vector, because the copy to points respects normals on the template points. The moment they do not have normals, we can quickly create normals if we go into our VARP and just create a constant, constant, switch this to be a vector, a vector, and the vector should be 0, 
one zero. That is a uh, axis. And if we put this into normal, they all rotate to be the right orientation. And now the last thing that is not correct is the rotation around this y axis. We have to rotate these hexagons to create a tight packing. So let's quickly introduce a transform node, transform and rotate them by 30 degrees around the. And now we have a tight packing with hexagons. Very nice. But we don't want to use hexagons. Instead, we want to use circles for our chain mail. So let's go to the circle node and up the divisions to say 24. And we have circles again. And these circles are the correct size, but to make them interlock, we want to make them a little larger. Quickly go in here, switch the scale to be 1.1, and they are a little bigger. Great. So the last thing is that we want to rotate them. At the moment, they are all lying in the same plane. And now we want to rotate every successive circle by a different angle to make them interlock. So let's go in. We have this normal here. By changing the normal, we can make stuff rotate. But we don't want to change the normal numerically. Instead, we want to rotate the normal. And for this, we have a rotate node that can rotate vectors. It takes the identity matrix and then you can define an angle and an axis and it spits out a rotation matrix. To apply this rotation matrix to this vector, we have to use a multiplication. So let's lay down a multiply node and let's multiply this vector by this matrix. Now let's put this into the normal and if I now go into this rotate, I can change the angle and you see they're rotating around the x-axis. Now let's rotate them by a certain amount. Let's lay down a constant and say 18 degrees, 18 degrees. Again, don't forget to convert this into radians, degrees to radians. This goes in here and this goes into this angle. Now they are all rotated by 18 degrees. And now I want to rotate the first one, 18 degrees, and the next one, minus 18 degrees. So how can we do this? Let's quickly go up and to the hex grid and check the indices. Here we have an index of zero, and then we have an index of one, and then of two, and then of three, and then of four, and then of five, and so on and so forth. So every odd number should get a different rotation. So let's go into our hex grid, we turn off this, and let's calculate an index from PT num that goes zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. That is easy. Let's just use another modulo, this time modulo we can duplicate this node here and let's use our ptnum modulo 2. First, let's check with our bind debug node here what this gives. And now we have a debug of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so forth. So in theory, if we just take this, we could rotate them differently. So now here I have a node that spits out 0, 1, 0, 1. And if I now multiply by the angle that I'm intending to use for rotation, so I multiply these indices by the rotation angle and put it in here. Now every second one is rotated. And of course, now we are just rotating 0 times 18 degrees and then 1 times 18 degrees and 0 times 18 degrees and 1 times 18 degrees. I don't want to have a rotation of 0 on these ones. Instead, I want to have minus 18 degrees. So let's get a little bit more fancy by using a range map node, fit range, and let's turn these indices that we create into different indices. Let's put this fit here. And instead of 0 and 1, I want to have minus 1 and 1, like so. And now you get the interlocking ring that I was looking for. Because now we have a hex pattern replaced with rings and they are rotated by 18 degrees successively. So now we can get one level up and quickly see what we got by just putting down a sweep. And let's use second circle here. This one can be closed and here we have the backbone curve and this one is the cross section. And let's go smaller with this one by deleting the channels and going down with the radius. And you can see now we have this nice interlocking ring pattern. Our chain mail is ready. We have one problem though, because we opened this arc and now we get this gap here. So let's go back to closed and now this is working. And the last thing we want to do is to just reverse this, reverse, like so. And here we have our chainmail pattern. And it is procedural. We can go in and generate more of it by, say, putting 30 here and 40 here. And we have a lot of chainmail. So the second part of this tutorial will show you how to take this flat piece of geometric accurate chainmail and put it on a cloth simulation. 
If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. Not only for supporting Antagma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as particles, vellum, geometry nodes, and so on and so forth. And at this point, let me say thank you so much to all our existing Patreons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.